<laughs> Welcome everybody to the Slasher Smash podcast. I'm John, and these two are Matt and Tiffany. Hi. See, Hi. I let you do your intro today. <laughs> I'm so proud of both of you. And we have the whole gang back together today. Yeah, yeah. it's been like months. Five. No more special guests. Well, right now, for all we know, the last episode might need a special guest. <laughs> We can't do it's the awards ceremony. We can't bring it a is. special it's guest for be, the awards yes ceremony. Yes, we can. It's gonna be all we're gonna have all new guests. We're not none of us are gonna be in it. It's gonna be all guests. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck go on these stupid re- bastards do? What? <laughs> we're gonna go on and review bomb our own podcast, being like, I don't know, these hosts seem like they don't know what they're doing. Yes. Uh all right, Tiff, what movies are we talking about today? Because I there's four movies bouncing around in my head, and I apparently keep getting them wrong as to what we're actually doing today. Uh, I believe Fair it's enough. Pinocchio and the Emperor of the Night. It is now. Oh, wait, Shut no. up, Matt. We will <laughs> watch that later. <laughs> no, we decided that it was time to go head to head with Jaws: The Revenge versus The Apparition. Those are two, movies. or as or as John had said movies. previously, Jaws: The Apparition. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Jaws the apparition versus uh, cabin <laughs> apparition mm-hmm. alone in the cabin. No, alone in the theater. yeah. There you go, alone in the cabin. <laughs> alone in the cabin and Jaws the apparition. <laughs> oh, what a great semifinals! If, <laughs> if this podcast could take off, that's the two movies we're gonna make out of our own budget. Jaws the apparition. It's just a ghost shark. <laughs> And it would be a hell of a lot more entertaining than the original movie. <laughs> it probably would be. And we actually probably, if we did Alone in the Cabin, we could probably get Christian Slater. I mean, if we were I literally... imagine he probably works for Cheez-Its <laughs> at this point. Which one do you guys want to start with? I don't know. Matt, Matt you want to start with the apparition? Cause... <laughs> yeah. Do you, want, do, you want, do you want a little summary? Yeah, do a summary. A little, little sum-sum. Yo, I'm in a little reader in a nice Wisconsin accent, huh? Oh, well, here we go. We got the apparition. It's a uh, 2012 American supernatural horror film there written and directed by Todd Lincoln. Yeah, I think I was neighbors with a Todd Lincoln. Oh, and this directorial debut and starring Ashley Green, Sebastian Stan, Tam Felton, Juliana Gill, and Rick Gomez. The plot follows three college students who, after the death of their friend, must battle a supernatural force they summoned themselves. The film was loosely inspired by the Philip experiment conducted in 1972. Go Packers. Go Packers. Go Packers. All right. What do you guys got to say? All I can say right now right, is I gotta get... if the viewers want us to do a podcast in that accent, I'm out. Because I could not do an entire <laughs> one episode podcast in Tip. that accent. You just got to be who you truly are. I am. Honestly, and I've only got you... certain Midwest. dialogue that is that weird <laughs> it kind of crosses into your accent kind of crosses into the illinois factor there so <laughs> did your door just open <laughs> which one walked in which one walked in is it the apparition <laughs> get out we mentioned the philip experiment matt's gonna die oh my god everybody get in your electrical oh my cages god. the timing of that was beautiful <laughs> call draco malfroy the shit's going off the rails wow. Oh, Peapod. Peapod's like, I don't want to be in the shot. I just wanted to open your door. <laughs> Jesus, Dad. Pe- Pe- Peapod's like, fuck this door. Why is this closed? Mm-hmm. So this <laughs> apparently this film was based on a loosely based by a real experiment called the Philip Experiment in 72. Uh, I didn't really look up what the Phil- Philip Experiment was. It was exactly. a waste of I think taxpayer it was just... money. That's what I'm guessing. <laughs> I think it was just college students that tried to interact with, like, um, basically they tried to create ghosts. And this is from two seconds of reading it, uh, using the human will as their power to create and communicate with these ghosts. That's obviously it failed. I mean, obviously. Did you watch the movie? Because they pretty much nailed that whole notion. <laughs> it was fucking stupid. Yeah. yeah. This so movie. This movie was really good ideas. Mm-hmm really badly executed the the like 75 percent of the movie was pretty decent they got some of the ambiance going some of the things were a little weird like yeah i don't want to say cheesy or corny it was that's not quite the word i'm looking for but it just like it was there like it was set up like we were i don't know about you guys but i was enthralled up until the ending and then i'm like what it just happened 
the only name I remember in this movie was Patrick. <laughs> that's that's literally I think the only That was Draco character Malfoy's name character name. Yeah. But yeah. the part that the part that upsets me is like all this ghost shit is happening. The guy that you did these experiments with, I don't know how many years prior, about ghosts, where a ghost encounter happened and killed your then girlfriend, and the guy who you did the experiment with is now trying to contact you saying, you're in trouble, you need to contact me, and you're like, eh, I don't think it's really happening, and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, well, you know it's happening. They gave no context as to why Ben ran away the only thing that was ever talked about was when him and his friend patrick finally met in person and then patrick's like well at least i didn't run away oh th what so what did he do did he is it because his girlfriend at the time got taken he was like i'm done i wash my hands of this how he long got the fucking life happening? insurance money and he like <laughs> because they give because all of a sudden now it starts coming after ben there's no context as to how long was it just done with the other ones and then moved to Ben? Had it always been following Ben? Because now shit just randomly started happening. It's not like we were given context. But, like, the previous location he, he was at, he was seeing weird stuff, but blowing it off. Like, we have no context of the time period. It just randomly starts happening to this camera guy who was part of the group. God knows whenever that was. It doesn't really say specifically that I was going after <clears throat> them. No, An explanation it later in the movie says it just, it later in the movie they say it just kills to kill to learn about us to, to feed off. Of but us. there was oh, no any the, context that it was happening to anyone else except for the group that had opened the portal. Like, I got yes. a question though: Does it, it has anybody in this movie technically guaranteed? Uh, like, and you can stop me. I mean, the only thing that we have verified dead is a dog, correct? Well, I mean, the plant life, like a oh yes, and the plant life dying, but yes, the, the cactus plant life. at the beginning. Yeah, you gotta remember the fucking cactus. God <laughs> yeah, save the cactuses. As, as far as death faces. goes, it was just the the cactus and the dog again. Plant life. Technically so alive. technically, yeah, like, we never that third guy that he did the experiments with. We don't know what happened to him. They never no. stated if he was killed or no. anything. Or gone missing. Fact, the girlfriend got sucked into a concrete wall. Gonna go ahead and assume she died. But you don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we weren't verified. She could have been sucked into the other world. Yeah. The other world could be like a 24 7 well, fucking party. We don't know. She'd be having the time of her life. Got, I'm guessing it's probably a Walmart. It's probably a Walmart. <laughs> Costco. I, I think they were sponsored by Costco. Nah, no, no, Costco no, that was just the main girlfriend. That was just the, the, the present day girlfriend. It's probably, oh, it's at Sam's Club. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, got it. You know where she got sucked to is one of them quick trips. <laughs> Ooh, I'd, hey, I'd, I'd stay family. there too. Sign me up, bitch. Me <laughs> we do love our Fuck, we do. God, it's they're sad. so good. <laughs> That's, I, this, I, there's so much about this movie that it seemed like they borrowed from other movies. Obviously, The Ring. Um, I'd have to say one of the coolest parts, one of the, it's, it's set up by one of the stupidest parts, but one of the coolest parts is when she, like, something happens in the laundry room and she's like, I'm going to nail the door shut. Yeah. It's clear this thing can pass through walls. So I don't know why fucking nailing the door shut even crossed your mind, but she nails it shut and then turns around and she's in the laundry room. I mean, that was cool. Let me just yeah. point out, she nails straight into trim. Which is not <laughs> fucking connected to the door in any way, shape, or form. So, yeah, it wasn't even like the edge of the door bullshit. trying to go into the door frame. It was the door frame, and it's like, the, and I, yeah, I know it was. And your it nails was a bad are not setup, long but... enough to get in there. <laughs> and like, I get it that a lot of people Why? aren't smart enough to realize that, but I, man, fuck you guys. That's lazy ass writing. Yeah. Because she could have well, grabbed, like, like said, a board or something. Yeah. Yeah, you could have nailed a board across the door. Who the fuck has boards lying around in their house? Well, I do. I mean, I, I have one in my garage. <laughs> at least one, if not multiples. No, I have multiples. Yeah, the garage was right next to the laundry room. She could have grabbed it. No. You don't, but, got okay, any, so you don't have any wood you... in your house, Tiff? 
None whatsoever? No. Not, Not random shocked. boards. Not shock. I also I also don't like have a house. I'm in an apartment, okay? There's no reason I would need wooden boards. <laughs> what is something you liked about this movie? Some of the ambiance was good. They had good parts that they really built up with the sound and with the lighting and like like even just the the subtle one where they were they fell asleep on the couch and the where they woke up and all the doors were open. That's creepy. Like, yeah, I like that. some of the they did really good with setting up a lot of the scenes for tension. Yeah. Matt, anything you enjoyed? No. No, I'm trying to think but I fuck no. Um <clears throat> I've no no this in general is just fucking there it had some intrigue there you go it, it kept you yeah it kept you interested until it just slowly at the ending just trailed off and then it's done okay so I, I do I do think that this movie did steal from other horror movies obviously Every but the movie. whole <laughs> setting the alarm and then the doors being open was taken from insidious i just rewatched insidious recently oh really i don't think that one was cool because he punched oh it's good but he put out he puts on the the alarm for the house and then he goes upstairs and the alarm goes off and the door is wide open in this Mm. one though their alarm didn't go off but all the doors were open so i mean there's there's creepiness creepiness to it i kind of wish the alarm had gone off and that's what woke them up and they're like what the fuck do you want to talk about the ending? They gotta, they gotta work on their. What'd story you dislike about the movie the most, John? Um, you don't ever really see anything. So I hate, but mostly it's for monster movies. But I hate horror movies or monster movies where you don't ever really get to see the thing, the monster, mm-hmm. the ghost, the spirit, mm-hmm. the apparition. In this case, well, you and see that's a good it point. for like a sec when she has the thermal gun. And when she comes out of the the tub, no, remember the, it, remember we the washer. Would never really... Remember the washer in the laundry room with the yeah. That's door? what I meant. The washer. Sorry, not oh, the okay. tub. When she I comes like, out of the washer. Yeah, I thought she meant the but shower. But it was never scene really established like, that it. <laughs> no, I mean, I guess kind of there, but like it was never really established that this apparition was a girl or a guy, or Ooh, so it just kind of yeah. looked like his ex girlfriend when it came out of the washer. I I'm guessing it doesn't have a gender. Yeah. Well, and again, it's an apparition kind of a thing. doesn't. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it's just some it, sort of it. fucking being. I don't, I don't know how you would. Tip, what would you hate about well, this they, movie they the weren't... most? I, the the story behind the apparition. I I hate everything about it because yeah. in the movie they're they're Super showing they're showing all this activity that it's doing and it's capable of, but then at the end when the the guy who's been researching all this trying to learn more about this apparition starts talking about it it's like that makes no sense to the information you were showing us it was doing proceeding up to the ending so it's like you were saying that this this apparition it wants to you know it's haunting people and whatnot but then all of a sudden at the ending it's like well it wants to learn us it wants to have what it can't what it can't have and it's like what it's not like it's controlling people and taking a form and then getting what it wants. It's it, it's very unclear. I don't like it at all. I didn't like that none of you said that a dog died. That's very frustrating. I, 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 I'm not a fan of that. I think that a dog should not die in horror movies, damn it. It just walks into the house, which they're like, oh, it looks like we got a visitor, and goes into the laundry room and just lays down and dies. Douche. That's it. Yeah, they could have. It it's not even a cool scene. It's not a fun no. scene. It doesn't really even help with anything in the story other than like, oh, something died here. That's odd. And then she peels up the floor and there's mold. But I got to yeah. say that was not my first um, thing that I hated the most of this movie. I hated the most of this movie is that anybody would think that a fucking camera would have that much excess wiring that a ghost could tear it out of the fucking <laughs> wall and dry it and drag it all the way to a fucking tent. <laughs> Probably 10 yards away. No, yeah, I would just leave all that fucking wiring in the walls. It's fine. No we, we got wiring he professionally spare. installs this shit. He professionally installs this stuff, which He's means he leaves shit, 30 man. extra feet of wire in yeah, everything he every does. Every single time. You never know when you might need extra. 
Jesus fucking Christ. Was Wi-Fi not a thing back in like 2012? I'm pretty sure. We uh, not have I don't. That ran it off might Wi-Fi? not have been. It might not have been. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, that was fucking. Sorry, annoying. I didn't mean to It I was annoying. This whole movie was annoying because they they didn't have a hard concept of what the entity or apparition actually was. You know what? I want them to make another Until Dawn. That's what I want. They are. They Seriously? just remade the game. Yeah, they're. I, uh, making... I just saw. I just saw a post that devs are in the works for an Until Dawn too. Yeah. Fuck yeah. yes. They did like. Fuck yeah. They did like a re. They did a remaster for PC and PS5, and I think there's a sequel coming. Yep. Oh god, yeah, that game was so good. Sequel. They also are releasing a movie adaptation on Netflix. I think. Yes, that's the one I saw too. That would really be cool to watch too. It's never going to be as good as the original. I get that, but. Let's talk about Until Dawn. <laughs> yeah, this, I'm sorry. I, I can't. I'd rather talk about Until Dawn, but I got to finish up this garbage. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck. Uh, it's To me, the ending seemed like they had two different endings, and they're like, what if we just put them together as one? This is another part that bothered me after we finished watching it. Draco Malfoy lives, lives in that fucking electric cage for an unknown amount of time that we know about. Fine. Never gets attacked. They run there to escape, go in that cage, and they get attacked right away. Yep. I don't. So it, it never worked, or it did well, work. Well, and I'm it doesn't. Sure. And it, and his his theory doesn't make sense. Malfoy's character's theory doesn't make sense if he was able to live in there. Patrick. He, he said. Patrick. Um. He yeah. said. Patrick. <laughs> no, it's Patrick. When he was explaining it. It's a it's 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 based on electricity is what basically is putting he's putting a barrier of electricity around him. But as he talks about this apparition, he says the apparition works through electricity, which means Patrick should have been killed a long ass time ago. Like Ben in that Yeah, more. again. Like it, it Well, it's like they don't know what the monster is. Yeah. They, they, they I don't on one path and branch off another. I don't think that Patrick ever knew what the fuck actually was going on no, no, no. i i think he's legitimately the stupidest one out of all of them and just kept fucking with forces that he shouldn't have been fucking with well i that's think he's just dumb i think general. yeah i think we're the stupidest ones for watching yes we are yes I mean... so then she gets out of the cage after uh, ben is missing finds him in a closet where he's sitting there all contorted stolen from the ring and then his mouth slowly starts to open. I, I don't know what the meaning no, of that there was. There is nothing throughout the entire movie where I, the apparition had, a, where you see it doing it to different, it, there's no point. I, I think I know what the meaning of it was. What was supposed to happen, it was in the deleted scenes, I'm guessing, where she actually goes up to him and starts teabagging his ass. <laughs> right, on, right in his mouth like that. I would have rather seen that. That would have been fucking hilarious. I mean... <laughs> Oh, are you dead? Like, just, just the whole movie leading up to this point, and then it's one big fuck you, one big joke. Oh, fuck, that well, would you have been stated, funny. You, you stated so many times if she would have just ran away, just left Ben, yeah. left the house, just left him and not said anything, she would have probably lived, because it was going after him. Uh, at least it she seemed like fine. it at the time. Mm-hmm. So the apparition chases her into the woods, we assume, because of the camera work. And yeah. then she kind of just stops and turns around and screams. Okay, so she's dead. Kind of assume. And then it cuts to this. What's the filter put on the camera? To Se- sepia? 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 sepia. 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 Whatever. You all know because Costco we're, camera we're saying filter. it. You all know because we're saying it wrong. You know exactly what one we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's that yellowish tint to the, the film. Yeah. And then she walks to a Costco. We're going to go Costco. And crawls in a tent. And then a bunch of weird hands come from behind, like in Phasmophobia, and kill her. Or don't well, it just, kill her. It just I don't fades know. To black. I don't know what the ending is. It just fades is she to in black. purgatory? It doesn't make any sense. I, I don't. don't know. Is that is it supposed to be a world where everybody's been taken and she's the only one left? Yeah, which also doesn't make any sense because there's nobody here. Yeah, she she's walks the only this human place. Being. There's no other humans around. Yeah. I don't know. So I don't know. And I don't it, know. And, what and if it's the Costco, that place is always fucking busy. <laughs> right you never have downtime <laughs> no and there's they imply that this thing is just going to keep going from person to person feeding and learning about us i don't know what this is so we're just gonna agree this movie sucked ass yes but 
Unfortunately, it not was, as much as Jaws. Yeah, it, it was one of the better ones that we have watched from everything we've watched, but... Uh... Yeah, because there was bad. intrigue. There was there was deep. There was mildly okay setup. Yes, it just failed to ever define what this is it or just, what yeah, you're dealing it, with. Or again, the ending. Fucking yep. writers, you can write the best script in the entire world, all the way up to seventy five percent of that film. But if you don't take that twenty five percent and nail it home, you fucking done fucked up. <laughs> they could have just did like it. We ripped it through some sort of portal to here and now it wants to kill us so it can go back to where it came from anything like that <laughs> to justify why it's going after them but now you were just like yeah they brought it in the world bless you matt Thank they you. brought it into the world and uh yeah it's just gonna kill everybody now uh yeah we don't really know why yeah it's all right it's just awesome well, yeah. Right. Just give a reason as to why it's killing everybody. Like, oh, we got to stop this, and then it's instead it's just they all die and everything works out. Well, the Packers right, are Jaws... playing in fifteen minutes. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> Jaws the apparition. <laughs> Jaws the, the apparition. We We've already seen this multiple times. I have. This movie I was boring. So I... <laughs> no, that's right. Okay, qu yeah, real tip. quick, Tiff. Let's get your take on it, and then I'm going to tell you ten things I found out about the film. One of these, and I don't mean to sound clickbaity, is going to blow Matt's <laughs> fucking mind. So, I, watching, I've never watched any Jaws movies, so I, I have no concept of if Jaws is terrifying. I just think sharks are terrifying, and I think it's great. I'm not going to lie, I didn't pay attention for most of it. Um, I was mainly just reading off the body language and what was happening, and I was like, okay. Um, yeah, I, uh, I... I, this couldn't even keep my attention. The only reason I was paying attention is because of those God. two. <laughs> because they were making jokes and was, talking it about boring. it and stuff as it was playing. So that was the only reason I was paying attention to the movie. Because I was just not. It was It was it basically if you attention. gave Hallmark Jaws, you know, and said make a Jaws movie. They made a Hallmark yes. movie out of it. That's basically it. Yeah, yeah the main no... lady was terrible. Michael Caine was the best thing that happened in this movie, but sharks don't just... 75% of their body doesn't go out of the water when stuff happens to it. You can shock it with electricity or whatever that flashlight thing was at the end. A shark's body is not going to, except for the back fin, it's not going to come all the way out of the water and stand straight up. That's not how physics work or gravity or anything. So that was really stupid. And then to ram it yeah. with a boat and have it explode, because apparently sharks are 80% <laughs> methane gas, it makes no fucking sense. I don't, it was such a dog shit of a movie. But here we go. I was hoping you were going to get to facts. that. <laughs> During the climax of the movie, the notorious roar of the shark actually originates from a Tom and Jerry cartoon. Oh, the fuck. sound engineer declined to create an original sound effect, saying that the concept of a roaring shark is absurd. I agree, and that should they yep, should listen to the fucking is. audio person. What the fuck? Uh, this one's kind of stupid. Blue dye filled the tank where the climax was filmed, causing Michael Caine and that lady's hair to turn blue. I <laughs> mean, kind of boring. You keep mentioning climax. I don't think anybody climaxed off of this movie, John. <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> the primary tagline of the movie is this time it's personal. And in Back to the Future 2, they spoofed on a movie saying it was Jaws 19. And the tagline of that movie was this time it's really personal. <laughs> we'll call Back to, oh, Back to the good Future 2. I Back like it. Back to the Future. Fucking yeah. <laughs> um, Michael Caine earned $1.5 million for just seven days of work in the Bahamas for this film. Good. He also won in a an uh, Academy Award during this time, but he could not receive it. Could he not receive it because he was doing this fucking piece of shit movie? Is that why? Yes, something that oh, he's fuck. something he did say that he ultimately regrets. Oh, that poor uh, guy. Roy Schneider, the main character of the first Jaws, was invited to make a cameo, but he said, "quote unquote," even Satan himself could not persuade me to do Jaws Part <laughs> Four. So instead, they just used his picture in a couple of parts of the movie, which was good for him. That's yes, amazing. I'm right glad choice. you stood your ground. All right, here we go. This one's for Matt. Sub, <laughs> or, uh, fun fact number six. An essential subplot 
revolved around Hoagie, Michael Caine's character, smuggling drugs onto the island. Damn right. Although the scene... Although the scenes were filmed, they were ultimately removed during post-production as they detracted from the main focus on the shark. Fuck that! That would have been cool! The, f- the shark wasn't even the in full there narrative. Enough. No, the full narrative can be found in the, the book. There's a book, Jaws of Revenge. Oh god. Oh my god. Which, right. in this book, funny, funny enough, fun fact number seven. The novelization which was based on the original script, contained numerous scenes and subplots that were ultimately omitted from the film. Here's some of those subplots. The Avenue Police Department discovering Sean Brody at the beginning of the movie. Apparently, like, they find, like, his body, like, just all torn up and shit. Mm -hmm. That would have been better. Uh, Thea, Thea, the girl being hypnotized and nearly wandering into the water at night where the shark lurks. The death of a windsurfer, a humorous encounter involving a drunken retired newscaster and the shark. That I want to see. That would I think all of these should have been entered because it seems like they cut a lot. So they made Jaws the Revenge. It's about a shark, but they're cutting a lot of subplots that deal with the oh. shark. <laughs> Some of these subplots explain why the shark is coming after the Brodies. I didn't understand that. A drive-by shooting where the Brodies narrowly escape. A foot mm. pursuit, a uh, strain mm. on Mike's marriage due to the secrecy about the sharks. So they actually did touch into like how that affected say, their marriage was... for a little bit, but they yeah, blew right past fine. that. Uh, deleted characters such as an island gangster who befriends Ellen, the mom, uh, later killed by the shark, Hoagie's law enforcement partner, and Papa Jacques, a voodoo doctor. Nice. Who served as a local advisor disliked by Mike for exploiting islanders. Shit, that would have just having that um, character in would have been awesome. So the whole thing that the shark is coming after them is because a voodoo person put a curse on Mike after a bad interaction. And that's what spurs the shark to come after the Brodies. That was the voodoo curse. It's not a great explanation, so but it, it's an explanation. So, it was, yeah. so the curse was put on Michael when they were younger? It wasn't when they were no bullied. in the in the Bahamas. Oh, in the Bahamas. So, so it's oh. a relatively recent thing. So in the which book, would explain why the shark, because the shark dies yeah. at the end of Jaws one. Yeah. So it's not that shark. No, it's okay. different shark. So they make it in this movie seem like this is the shark that the Brodies have been hunting their entire life, but no, that one died at the end of Jaws one. Right. Which... Uh, Papa Jacques summoning the shark after a confrontation with Mike and stealing Thea's pail to curse it resulting in Thea then being lured towards the water in a translator. And then, this is the best part, several segments narrated from the shark's perspective, revealing it as a pawn unable to comprehend the force driving it. Yes. I want yes. this scene oh, yes. God. so much. <laughs> Please give me the narrative of the shark. That's yes. all I want. Yes. Here's the narrative. <laughs> I'm the shark. Yum, 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 yum. Look, there's food. Yum, 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 yum. Oh, I like to swim. Why do I want to kill this family? I hope it really <laughs> goes into him like he's like sitting there with his hand in his fin. He's like, oh, why do I just want to murder these specific people and nobody else? I don't get it. No, I'm sorry. This book sounds fucking terrible, too. It, it sounds like, oh, God, combine Chucky and Jaws. I, that's what it sounds like. And then please give me the narrative from a fucking shark's perspective (laughs) as it's confused why it's hunting humans. Yeah, no, no. a lot of those, just putting even a little, a scene or two from all those subplots would have made this movie more cohesive because they didn't, that's all they said was this is personal. So it's like, how is it personal? You they never explained this it. movie. This movie never. did not need to happen, and I don't think that there was anything that could save this fucking movie. I'm no, sorry. This but movie they cut think... all these scenes, but they kept the scene where Michael and his wife have open sex in an open shed, open windows, open door in wouldn't, front of the entire neighborhood. Wouldn't you? <laughs> fucking genius, John. Come on. Well, they, if I'm going that far, I'm going to show the. I sex. was going to say there was I'm no not just going to apply or anything it. shown, so I wasn't even yeah. great. <laughs> I would have showed. I mean, I would have kept the fact of keeping him as a drug lord, uh, Michael. uh, Kane. Kane. I would have kept that. I would have combined all these plots. In reality, Michael Kane was running drugs for the shark. And Michael Brody 
his wife was cheating on him with the shark. So he comes home late one night after studying conch shells and walks into the bedroom and there's the shark and his wife going at it. And he's like, oh, my God. Uh, Vengeance, the animatronic shark, received a Golden Raspberry Award for the worst actor in this film. Yay! Making it the first time an animal had been nominated since the Shrieking Dolphins in Jaws 3D. What? So, apparently, Jaws Jaws 3D is apparently a dog shit movie too. Mm-hmm. Who would have thought? <laughs> uh, this movie spermed the term voodoo shark as a TV trope. I don't really know anything about that one. Yeah. Uh, and this movie actually made 51.9 million against a 23 million dollar budget. And, uh, yeah, it ripped a lot of people was, off. It's got to be because of yeah, Kane's and name. it was widely mocked by comedians for years following its release. It says, At least it provided thing, so. that. I mean, that comedy is a good well, thing. Mean, some enjoyment to someone. Yeah, yeah, that's valid. This movie was, like Matt said, it's a Hallmark movie featuring a shark where one person dies. Uh, two. Two. Sorry, two. Conveniently, the same amount of people that die in Pinocchio. And the Emperor of the Night. We will watch it a different time. Which we Shut will get up. To. We will get to. <laughs> I'll make you a bowl of waffle crisp while we watch it. Oh, All right. Shit. And I'll just fucking piss in it and serve it right back to you. You won't notice. The, you won't notice the difference. All right. Do we want to vote? And make this real quick? Yeah. All right. I'll go first. Jaws the Revenge. Jaws the Revenge. Jaws the Revenge. That's bad. Just bad. Jaws All the bad. apparition. All right, let's bad. just combine <laughs> these two into one. Really, the haunting of the house was they pulled a shark through the portal. <laughs> it's been haunting their Arizona house. They brought in Jacob Malfoy from Hogwarts to kill the shark. He failed. Yeah. Michael Caine delivered some drugs. So then they had to bring Bucky in. He failed. Yeah, it was his Winter Soldier that <laughs> killed Ghost Shark. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, it was. All right. I'm glad this was a good one. Uh, yes. We're to the finals. Yes, thank John. fucking God. John, what are the finals? Alone in the Dark. <laughs> Alone in the Dark versus Jaws the Revenge. It's what we probably could have predicted after the sixth episode. But here we are. It is. It, this is going to be a tough one. It really is, I think. Yeah, I'm glad that it's these two. I think we should come up with some way to make this interesting. I don't know how yet. Maybe we can brainstorm some shit. I was debating actually playing the Alone in the Dark game to see how close to the movie it actually was. Or at least watching gameplay yeah, from it been, if I can't find I it. I have been tempted to look up gameplay to see because I've heard other YouTubers mention it. And I'm like, what the fuck? Apparently this okay. is a good game, but a shitty movie adaptation. From what I've heard, the game is the first like first person survival game, so- I think. John, do you play you play the Alone in the Dark game. Tiff, you read the Jaws piece of shit book. I'll 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 do nothing. I'll piss in Waffle Chris and keep serving it to John. All right, bye everybody. Thanks for bye. watching and listening. Jeff Fox. I'm more scared of Tara Reed. I feel like she's gonna see this and she's gonna kill us one by one. Did you fart? Bye guys.